Hey everyone, it's Blake, and we are working on the second video in today's videos, and this is how to convert an ML Agents point two project over to point three. There's a lot of differences between point two and point three, so we're going to go over them in a little bit of detail. Overall, there are a lot of uh, language updates and structural updates, which I think make a lot of good sense going forward, but it does mean that while we're here on the cutting edge, we're going to bleed a little bit because we're going to have to bring a lot of code over from the old to the new. I do have a separate video on actually running the training because that has changed significantly as well, uh, but this is really going to focus on taking a project and actually working with it and making sure that it's good to go in 0.3. So the first thing I had to do I found was that my Python and my pip was uh, out of date. And so I'll go ahead and put all of these commands in the show notes, but I'm going to do them here. So the first thing I needed to do was do a Python uh, mpip install and upgrade pip. Now in this case, it's not going to need it because it's up to date because of what I did over the weekend, but I needed to do this to get everything up to date. The other thing is there is a new way to keep track of hyperparameters and the hyperparameters are in what's called the YAML file. So we also need YAML. So we do pip3 install pyyaml. And again, in my case, it's already satisfied. Um, when you're working with 0 0.3, there are enough changes that it is a manual port from 0.2 to 0.3 that you can't just copy things over or take a 0.2 binary and run it in 0.3. None of that works. You're going to have to take your project, go from 0.2, bring it to 0.3, rebuild everything, and you can go from there. All right, so here's how I have my folder directory set up. In my E drive, I have my new ML Agents 03 folder. This Python is from the GitHub, so you'll see that there's this GitHub projects and ML Agents. This is the un from Unity. And so I just go grab the latest set, uh, you know, basically did a hard reset, make sure that I was set to their master branch and then copied this Python folder over here. And that just gives me a nice clean place separate from their code and then I can't screw anything up too bad. So I made that copy and then this ML Agents Basics, this is my Unity project where you can see everything. So I've already opened up the project, I have it running here. This is the Again, we, we went all the way back to square one. You know, I tried with the more advanced one. I'm like, oh, I'll just use the more advanced one and nothing worked. I'm like, oh, why doesn't anything work? Just rewind back to the basics. That's why we have this sim super simple project that we can use and uh, to show off, you know, that yes, this does work end to end. That's why we wrote it. And sure enough, we're making good use of it. So let's see. We're back into Unity and a few things happened. So first of all, one of the things that was really important is in the Academy, the Academy the Academy source file is still there, but they changed the name of some of the parameters. Um, and so you're gonna wanna go through that and make sure that all of that um, is to your liking. The max steps I think on mine got zeroed out, or no, I needed a new Academy. Um, and then the brain was the one where some of the parameter names had changed. So for example, the vector observations and the vector actions, um, these space types, this is a different enumeration than we had before. So all of those had gotten reset back to their default values, right? So while here I was expecting continuous, um, it had accidentally been set at discrete because uh, Unity just rolled it back to the default value. So you're going to want to go through your whole project. Make sure you go through the brain and the academies and you make sure that all of these settings are exactly what you think they are. Um, again, my, uh, my player actions also got reset. A bunch of this stuff got reset. There are enough differences between point 0.2 and point 0.3. So go through this with a fine tooth comb. Uh, because you might find some gotchas there that you didn't expect. I certainly did. The Academy, yes, I had to add a new Academy. Again, my generic Academy is as simple as it gets. It's pretty much uh, a no-op. So Visual Studio's firing up, there it is. Um, my generic Academy, again, has nothing in it. So it's really just we're using the parent class here. Um, but again, go through that because, um, you know, I had to change my max steps. I do remember I was at zero, so I had to set that 250. 
main camera directional light thankfully those are unchanged and um although the gui layer is deprecated so i can turn that off i really don't use it anyway um here in the simplest game right so now we had an issue where the agents didn't really come through and we're getting compile issues um the marker uh was left unchanged and i believe the target was unchanged as well so really because again we're so simple we're so basic here um the only thing that really needed to go into uh was the simplest agent uh brain um now i'm sorry yes it goes into the agent script uh, the other thing that's very important is the name of this brain object becomes very important because your hyperparameters now have more structure to them because you can have multiple brains. So knowing which brain is using which hyperparameters is very important. And the way that this tool set does that is by matching the names of the brains. So um, you no longer want to just call this whatever you want. You should give this a very specific, very purposeful name so that your hyperparameters are correct. And it may be that, you know, over time you um, version it so that your hyperparameters file, uh, you can see the different versions as you um, kind of uh, uh, modify and uh, evolve your uh, needs. So simplest game here we are here's our agent um i'm oh, sorry that yes that references the brain and so we're just going to right click and edit script and so in some cases i just commented things out so you can see the differences between them so these are the variables needed to encapsulate all of the information about the game that is left unchanged initialize agent this is a new uh, override. I'm not really using it in this case. It's kind of like the awake method for a game object from what I can tell. Much like the agent reset is the start of a game object, you know, kind of like the start of a game object. And this is pretty much identical as well. Now, there are absolutely some differences after that. Um, so collect state is no longer a thing, right? So before we had um, method and the signature looked like this, right? And we collected the state and then this was the actual content of it, right? So we had this, you know, I'm going to go through and collect all the state and create a list of things and then add a bunch of stuff and then return it. That's toast. It has been replaced with collect observations. Um, couple of things to note. One, this returned a list of float. This returns void. So they are very different. Instead of initializing and using a list, we have this add vector observation. This add vector obs. So the actual thing that we are observing is the same. This is the distance to the target that has maintained consistent between the two, but how we get there is very different. So keep your eye on that. Actually, I'm going to make this font a little bit bigger uh, so that people can see what's going on. I'm going to close that as well. Okay. So collect state here, collect observations. Same idea, same goal, but very different structure on how it's done. Okay. The next thing is agent step. We used to have this agent step. What do you do when it's your turn? And agent step, again, had a signature like this right so and i think it was a public void if i recall correctly but agent step and then you would have your actions and then you would do you know whatever your interpretation of those actions in here again agent step is gone uh it has been replaced with agent action which looks very similar um in that it has the float actions but it also has this string text action what is the string text action for, really? I haven't gotten too far into it. We don't need to worry about it for this project, so we can deal with that later on down the line. But we just need to know that our actions that um, are basically identical as before, and that's really important. The other thing is, as we noticed, before there was in the enumeration the action space type, that has been changed to vector action space type. 
and that went from a state type enumeration to a space type enumeration. So these changes are why the editor loses some of your settings. And so a lot of your code is going to have to get modified to go from uh, the old if statement to the new to the new enumeration in this if statement. All right. So keep your eyes on that. Um, most of the actions here, this is identical, right? The action, you know, I pull action zero. In this case, you can only go up or down. I still clamp it and I still uh, multiply it by the marker speed, which was set up in our parameters up top. And then I still, you know, move the position. I do the calculation. If we are within the distance to earn a reward, then we are going to set a reward now. How do you set a reward? Well, um, instead of setting, instead of doing a hard set on the reward function, we do a set reward. There's also an add reward, which I think is for cumulative things. So if you have some things that can add rewards and other things that might add additional rewards or um, add penalties, uh, you know, I believe set reward is the same as doing an equal sign and then add reward would be uh, the same as doing kind of a plus equal sign. Um, so instead of reward equals, now we're doing set reward. So those are the big differences in the script. Now, go through all your script, fine tooth comb, look out for those, especially look for your uh, enumeration types for space type instead of action type, I think it was, um, agent action as opposed to agent step, and collect observations as opposed to collect state. So those pieces are important. Um, once you've done all that, you need to go back and be absolutely sure that you can set your brain over to player mode and that you can play your game. Uh, have that console window open and be looking for any kinds of warnings or errors. Um, you know, I got a number of them as I was going, which made me realize that I was having issues with my uh, enumerations and, and whatnot. So. Keep your eye open on the console window as you play your game a few times. If all of that goes, you should be ready to train. And so from here, you're just going to do a standard file when it feels like responding. Really? Did I just crash Unity? That would be awesome. Um, you know, file build. You would go ahead, build your output, and it would go to your output folder. Um, and again, it would build and go to this simplest scenario in your uh, Python folder. Now, one of the other key things, and I did cover this in the training video as well, but I should mention it in this one as well, because it's kind of one of the touch points between the two, is this trainerconfig.yaml. This is where we had the hyperparameters. Um, and so you'll notice this generic brain, that is the name of the game object in my Unity project. And so that does a name comparison to apply these parameters to that brain when training. And part of the reason behind this is so that you could have multiple brains, I believe, um, during a training session. So, and then each one of them has a little bit of uh, different parameters. And so you'd see this, yeah, in like striker brain versus goalie brain, right? These two brains work in the same scenario but they can have different parameters, even though I think in this case that they don't, uh, they could. Yep, and Unity crashed, sure enough, look at that. Um, so that covers uh, the vast majority of everything. Let me just go through. Um, yeah, and then from here, it's all about uh, running your training. Um, I do recommend, again, using TensorFlow and I'll include uh, my start tensor flow, uh, or sorry, tensor board, and I'll include my start tensor board batch file in the show notes as well so that you can see what is going on. So if you have any questions, any thoughts, go ahead and uh, leave them in the comments below. As always, I will do my best to answer any questions people have. I am going to finish uh, migrating all of these projects uh, with new bytes files and everything. Uh, to 0 0.3. Now that we have some of them working, I'm just going to bring the rest of them over and then I'll push up to GitHub as usual, have uh, all the GitHub stuff in the links so that 
that is available uh, for anybody to download and work with. Thank you very much and good luck out there.